Hey folks, Seth Liebson here. As we watch cities burn, statues being torn down, and calls to defund the police, if you haven't already, it may be time to think about personal protection. Guns Etc. has 10,200 square feet of guns, ammo, safes, and a staff that will work with you to find the best firearm for your situation. So stop by their huge store in Mesa or click on gunsetc.com and have access to over $400 million in firearms and accessories. And if you like my monologues, please subscribe to 960 The Patriot's YouTube channel. Welcome back and happy September 1st, 2020. Average Joe, middle class Joe, blue collar Joe, lunch bucket Joe. Over the years when he's been running for president or vice president, that's what Joe Biden says he is known as or has been known as. For what it's worth, I lived in Washington, D.C. for 15 years and had followed politics pretty closely before and after, as well as during there. And in no sense did I know of anyone who called Joe Biden any of those nicknames. It's a manufactured sobriquet he imagines as his reputation. He pushes or pushed that line as a romantic call to the average American and the traditional Democratic base that was popular somewhere in the mid-1970s when Joe Biden was cutting his teeth in politics, the kind of voter that would, in a decade, become a Reagan Democrat. Joe Biden has often tried to sell an image without showing us the goods. You've seen this large and small, or I guess I should say meaningfully and ridiculously. Whether he's boasting about his mental and physical agility, challenging people to push up contests, promising, promising us he's smarter than anyone else, going to beat Donald Trump like a drum in the debates, or even campaign from his home. That last one, it was two Sundays ago when he said, we will, when David Moore of ABC asked him, if he was going to campaign from home and if he could win a campaign that way. Well, polls changed, supporters got worried, and Joe Biden is not going to be running a basement strategy. After all, he was in Pittsburgh yesterday, for instance, and he is now saying he will be campaigning in battleground states. The science must have changed because he said in the same interview he was going to follow the science and as opposed to Trump events where he said, quote, look what happened with his events. People die. People get together. They don't wear masks. They end up getting COVID, close quote as opposed to those, he wouldn't subject people to that. This, despite even Reuters pointing out there has been no direct link between a Trump campaign event and an outbreak of the virus. But of course, Donald Trump is the liar, is incapable of telling the truth. But it begs an interesting question. What is and who is this ordinary Joe, this average American and his interests that Joe Biden says he represents? What is the average American? What does he want? What does he believe? I suppose one can start with what outsiders have viewed of us, and perhaps we start with St. John de Crivacour in his 18th century book, Letters from an American Farmer. There he once famously asked, quote, what then is the American, this new man? He wrote, he is an American who, leaving behind him all his ancient prejudices and manners, receives new ones from the new mode of life he has embraced, the new government he obeys, and the new rank he holds. He becomes an American by being received in the broad lap of our great alma mater. Here, individuals of all nations are melted into a new race of men whose labors and posterity will one day cause great changes in the world. Americans are the Western pilgrims who are carrying along with them that great mass of art, sciences, vigor, and industry, which began long since in the East. The American ought, therefore, to love this country much better than than that wherein either he or his forefathers were born. Here the rewards of his industry follow with equal steps the progress of his labor. The American is a new man who acts upon new principles. He must therefore entertain new ideas, form new opinions. From involuntary idleness, servile dependence, penury, and useless labor, he has passed to toils of a very different nature, rewarded by ample subsistence. This is an American. I love the idea of a new man, shaped by the idea of America creating him. This writing used to be standard fare in reading and teaching in eighth grade and high school history, if not college. I'm not sure it is anymore. Of course, I can understand why not. The call to become new, to love this country, to leave the prejudices and identities one left behind runs counter to the modern left, which is all about identity politics, your skin color, your ethnicity, the country you came from. It matters not what you think of this country and that you made it to this country or made it in this country. It matters what country you came from, according to the new 
dispensation. Why? Hard to explain. The success is and was achieved here, not there. And presumably there was a reason our parents or grandparents or great-grandparents or great-great-grandparents left their country for this. Be those countries in Africa, India, China, Europe, you name it. It is the odd person who chooses to leave great for bad or good for less good. I know this immediately raises a sophomoric objection. What about slaves who did not have a choice? Let me just say this. That was the experience of neither Barack Obama nor Kamala Harris. But regardless, it is the judgment of history then and now that efforts to repatriate back to Africa were seen as folly, even by those who flirted with the idea. As Keith Richburg, he, a black American who went to Africa in search of his ancestral origins, he was a reporter for the Washington Post, put it, quote, I feel secretly glad that my ancestors made it out because now I am not one of them, close quote. This, as Dennis Prager points out, is why millions more Africans have willingly moved to America than came here as slaves. In any event, the idea of the average American, it's been written on well and to length by many foreign visitors, from Crevacour to the Marquis de Lafayette to Alexis de Tocqueville to G.K. Chesterton to others. And they all come back to one main thing. In different words, yes, but the same thing. The idea of America as something new from the world they left, based on liberty and equality. The notion of equality, as Chesterton saw it here when he visited, was, in his words, quote, an absolute of morals by which all men have a value invariable and indestructible and a dignity as intangible as death. He would go on quite beautifully saying, quote, in truth, it is inequality that is the illusion. The extreme disproportion between men that we seem to see in life is a thing of changing lights and lengthening shadows, a twilight full of fancies and distortions, close quote. But what today is this average American, and does average Joe Biden speak to their interests? There are a lot of essays on who the average American is, by income, what they spend, how many children they have, etc. To me, this is the least interesting thing, because regardless of job, consumption, family, I think the ordinary American wants what most people want, a fair shake in life, safety, health, good schools, an opportunity to do better than their parents, and mostly for life to be just a little easier than it is. In short, less headache and stress. A pretty good summary of all this can be found in the preamble to our Constitution. The average American believes in justice, one might say, domestic tranquility, a common defense, general welfare or well-being, and secured blessings of liberty for themselves and their children. Would this and of this include more regulations on earning a living? either as an employer or employee? Would this mean ignoring riots and property destruction? Would this mean turning out billions of dollars to terrorist regimes? Would this mean more taxes? Would this mean more marginalization of law enforcement? Less religious liberty? Of course it would not, which is why I never quite understood why there would be anything but long years of Republican rule here in America. But for perhaps two things. A, Republicans ceasing to speak of these things, and be Democrats changing the terms of the discussion and convincing people of other interests that should plant the natural ones. The two are related, for without A, B becomes more possible. As Spinoza put it in his ethics, nature abhors a vacuum. So does politics. This is why I think Donald Trump is poised for a big win. He appeals, as Ronald Reagan appealed, to the common sense of things, also known as the ordinary, from which the word order comes. This has been forgotten in all the talk about ordinary Joe or ordinary Americans or the average American. Of course, there's almost really no such thing as an average American if we continue to think that America itself is exceptional. And so maybe we should just stop talking of ordinary Americans or average Joes. Somehow I think the whole concept reduces the thinking and consciousness of all we are. After all, what do we think of as an American dream in work, labor, profession, Someone who builds and employs thousands of people? Yes, labors and fails, but yes, also labors unrelentingly, even with reinventions and succeeds. Or someone who spends the entirety of their professional life in Washington, D.C., making rules and regulations for other Americans. What does, this what does this country believe is its ideal, its aim? Which of those models? On the eve of the presidential election in 1980, Ronald Reagan spoke to the nation, saying, among, the, among other things, that Americans we think of as heroes started out with no such notion 
of being a hero. They were people, though, who this country allowed us, quote, a glimpse into the soul of with the enduring vigor of her people. He said, I wonder if those who doubt America have forgotten that just as in the lives of individuals, so too in the lives of nations, it is always when things seem most unbearable that we must have faith that America's trials have meaning beyond our own understanding, close quote. And boy, have we had trials, especially this year, like no other. Just how many texts and emails from friends have you received in the past several months saying things like strange times or odd times or crazy times. I was spending some time on that Reagan speech from 1980 as I was thinking of strange times in our history. We've spoken a lot of 1968, not a lot about the 1970s though, and it's not remembered as a wonderful decade, perhaps because of politics, but perhaps too because of the forgotten patriotism of our bicentennial in that decade, a reminder of what we were and who we are. In that 1980 election eve speech, Ronald Reagan knew how to strum the mystic chords of memory including the scene from four years prior when Rick Monday grabbed our American flag from two demonstrators who were trying to burn it in center field. And as he came off the field to the dugout carrying the flag, thousands stood and cheered and then found themselves singing God Bless America in Dodger Stadium. I was thinking about that as we look to cities now with an awful lot of flag burners yelling an awful lot of awful things about this country. But we who know this country and our countrymen Know that, but for the violence and intimidation, we are more Rick Monday than Patrice Coulors. We knew what Ronald Reagan knew, as he said in that speech. There is nothing wrong with the American people. Oh, they are frustrated, even angry, at what has been done to this blessed land. But more than anything, they are sturdy and robust, as they have always been. Steadiness and robustness, which means healthiness. That's what gave us birth, a new birth of freedom, as Lincoln called it, and it's still new, and we are still his last best hope of earth. And any political aspirant that cannot speak to that, but rather speaks to what America is not and never was, is a political aspirant that is trying to take the exceptional and make it average, reduce the high and make it low. And we were never that, never that either, none of us were, not ever before and not now. Thus, in the end, the whole idea of an ordinary or average Joe is an idea that is a corruption, a distortion, or as Chesterton put it, an illusion or myth. So, too, should be any quest for the leadership of this country based on it. The most popular governor in one region of the country is famous for saying America was never that great. I understand the desire to say it. It's an illusion and myth as well. So, too, should be any quest for the leadership of this country be based on it. I'm Seth Liebson. We'll be right back.